I'm reading from Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through 11. And my glasses will help me with that. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the straps of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth out of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us bow heads in prayer. Almighty God, we are grateful for the forgiveness of sins, for the opportunity to be cleansed through faith in your son, Jesus. We are thankful for your word. And as we're about to reflect on it and learn from it, I pray that your spirit will indeed work in our hearts and lives so that we may receive your message this morning and be moved and changed by it. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let me see how many of you have taken down the Christmas decorations. How many of you still have the tree in the, in, in the house? Only us? Is that possible? Uh, you know, we took uh, the stuff down to the basement yesterday. We still have to get the tree out of the house. But typically after Christmas, and um, you know, the place needs a bit of cleaning, right? I find pine needles in June um, that I missed somehow, you know, after Christmas. But when we talk about cleaning, it seems like many people today prefer to use natural products when they're cleaning the house. Cleaning solutions that are more environmentally conscious and more health friendly. And so apparently if you juice up a couple of grapefruits and add four tablespoons of salt, you can give the tub a good rub down and it will look like new and smell real nice. If you have some brass or chrome fixtures that you want to spruce up, they will shine like new with lemon juice and baking soda. Do you need to scrub down those kitchen counters after all the holiday baking? What you do is you take a couple of tablespoons of baking soda, a cup of white vinegar, and a few drops of eucalyptus oil, and it'll do the job quite nicely. And you can use the same mixture to clean up those pans in which you burnt the, the Christmas turkey. And in fact, baking soda might be the secret ingredient to solving nearly every dirty, smelly problem in the world. And so when you think about it, if you have baking soda and duct tape, I mean, what else do you need, right? You can take care of any household problem. But the point is that there are a lot of natural ways to get stuff clean in the kitchen and the bathroom. But on this Sunday, <clears throat> this first Sunday of the new year, we might want to do 
some even deeper cleaning. And I'm talking about the kind of cleaning that gets all the way down to the soul. And that's what our scripture passage for today is all about. We get the expertise of John the baptizer. I guess we might call him the the original Mr. Clean. We learn from him about what it means to be cleansed in Christ. The gospel according to Mark starts this way. He says in verse 1 of chapter 1, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's the beginning of good news. Some old nastiness have been wiped away. Mark says we are about to read the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the good news that a world stained by sin and dulled by death had been waiting for. And the first messenger of that good news is John the baptizer. So what did John come to do? He came to announce the arrival of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He came to prepare people for his coming. And part of that preparation would involve some deep soul cleansing. And so John went down to the Jordan River to instruct people on how to get really clean. Clean in a way that would remove even the deepest and oldest dirt embedded in their lives. And so let me just share three thoughts with you today. Three things, three hints that we get from John about some soul cleansing here at the beginning of 2024. First, why don't you use all natural ingredients? You see, John's ministry is about as organic as it gets. He's the link between the stories of the Old and New Testaments. His job is to announce that the promises God gave to his people long ago were about to be realized. And he's saying to the people that God is about to do a new thing. He's dealing with the real dirt that had clung to Israel since the exile. The grime that has been part of humanity since the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And John uses the most basic natural cleansing ingredient to do his work. He uses water. But this water doesn't come from just any source. John stands at the Jordan River. It was the same river that Israel had crossed to enter the promised land generations before. And he seems to see his ministry as the beginning of a new exodus as he's inviting people to enter into a different sort of promised land. As Israel had passed through the waters of the Red Sea and then the Jordan, now God's people would again need to pass through water in order to realize a new future, the future promised by God's coming Messiah, the future that Jesus makes possible. So it says in verse 4, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. People came because they believed that God was about to do a new thing. The Jewish nation was back from exile in Babylon, but they were still under foreign domination. And at the time John went out into the wilderness, Israel was still under the occupation of a pagan Roman Empire. And so the people believed that the Messiah would come to bring God's glory back to Zion and the temple. 
And for them, repentance and forgiveness of sins were images of restoration and return. And so if John was right, then God was about to send one who would set things right once for all. The time was right for Jesus to come. That's what happened at Christmas just a few weeks ago. The time was right for something new. The time was right for repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And so listen, as we begin a new year, here's a question or two we might ask ourselves. Where in my life do I want God to do a new thing? Where in your life do you want God to do a new thing this year? And of what in my past do I need to repent in order to allow God to do a new thing in me? Of what do I need to be forgiven? Or who do I need to forgive in order to begin moving toward a different future. What John reminds us of is that it's the natural ingredients of Scripture and the water of baptism that do the best work of starting to strip away the grime. Scripture tells us we need to repent. And in the waters of baptism, we are washed clean and we receive forgiveness. Here's the second tip from John. (coughs) Know what kind of stain you are removing. If you want to get rid of dirt most effectively, you need to know the chemical makeup. And if you know the chemical makeup, you can know the best natural remedy to use. If you don't, you'll only be scratching the surface. You'll fail to get down to the nitty-gritty of the stain. Now, when it comes to dealing with the stain of sin, we often think of treating the sins we commit. We know we've done some bad stuff over the past year. and We make resolutions not to do those things again. But when we think of sin as simply a laundry list of missteps and mistakes, we really miss the the real problem that needs to be handled. And the real problem is not a few missteps here or a few missteps there. The real problem is sin, but with a capital S. And what the Bible tells us is that the capital S sin is a power that kind of enslaves us. We were born with a sinful nature. And it's a power that that needs to be defeated somehow. It's a power that leads to its partner called death. And we don't have the power or the means to deal with it effectively. Only a real Savior and Messiah can remove it. And the good news that Mark reveals is that the Son of God has come to do just that through the cross and the resurrection. And that's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to save the the Jewish nation from the oppression of the Roman Empire. He came to save them and us from sin and from death. Because you see, when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you're incorporated into the Messiah's saving work. And what you and I need to remember is that the beginning, at the beginning of this year, is if we're going to deal with, with that capital S sin in our lives, what it requires is a deep and honest self-examination. A way of 
looking honest at ourselves, a way of realizing and recognizing the ways in which we still find ourselves enslaved to, to sin. What we need is a, a new commitment to worship and praise the one who sets us free, the one in whose name we've been baptized. You see, Jesus gets baptized not because he's a sinner. He gets baptized in order to identify with us. He wants us to know that the fact is that he will be the one who leads us on a new exodus. Jesus is the one who will lead us through the water and on to freedom because he's God's dearly loved son who brings him great joy. And he was sent to do that, to give his life for our sins on the cross. So we are not slaves to sin anymore. And he rose from the dead and conquered death so we don't have to eternally die. That's what we identify with when we get baptized in the name of Jesus. So I think this first Sunday of a new year is a wonderful time, an opportunity to recommit ourselves to Christ. It's the perfect opportunity to think about this. Who can really remove the stain of sin in your life? Who can make you clean once and for all? Only Jesus can. And so as you stand at the beginning of a new year, are you willing to, to recommit your life to the Son of God? And here's the last point I want to make. Clean with a purpose. John baptized the people with the cleansing power of water, called on them to repent, to confess their sins, to be baptized. But repentance and forgiveness of sins was just the first step. John was preparing the people for the coming of the Christ. And he says in verse 8, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so John was talking about a cleansing of what had happened in the past. But he was also talking about something else, something that is related to the future. He was also pointing out what these shiny, fresh, and new people have been cleansed in the water of baptism, what they would do in the future. You see, baptism by the Holy Spirit has a lot of dimensions to it. But one of the most important is that it prepares you for life in the way of Jesus. What does that mean? It means that you've been released from the slavery to sin. When you confess your faith in Christ, you're not enslaved by sin anymore. Your faith enables you to live a new life what Jesus calls the abundant life, the full and rich and satisfying life, life in all its fullness, the real and eternal life of people who were made in the image of God. Through your baptism, you're part of the body of Christ. You're part of the church. You're involved in ministry and mission. You have fellowship with other believers. You bring God's hope and love and peace into your relationships with others. You're more and more living the life God created you for. So let me try and sum it all up for you. The first Sunday of the year is a, it's a great opportunity to consider these three things. Reflect on the past year and remember where it is that you've been in exile and slavery because of sin. 
Remember the cleansing power of your baptism and the freedom God has given you in Jesus Christ through faith in him. And consider where the Spirit might lead you in this coming year. How you and I can grow more and more into the people God created us to be. How we can become people who look more and more like the Jesus we believe in. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we are grateful for your plan of redemption. For the waters of baptism that brought us into your kingdom, into your family. May we also experience the baptism of your Holy Spirit to renew us and conform us and change us to become more and more like your Son, Jesus. May we all take an honest look at our own lives and maybe this past year and pray for something new that you want to do in us in 2024. That you will bless us with growth. We pray that in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.